Okay, so to do a pillowcase dress, the first thing you need to do is measure who you're making it for, roughly. Um, I happen to have kids that age, so I am going to show you the measurements really quick. Okay, basically you want to take your measuring tape, um, have them lift their arms, and check the width. So 24 and a half, and you're going to double that. Then um, take a step back. Then you want to measure how long you want it. So down to about mid thigh is good. So for example, Delilah, um, I would do 27. That gives us room to hem it. Okay, so now we're going to lay the fabric out. Um, any fabric works, any cotton fabric. Um, this is piquet fabric. I like it because it breathes well in the summer, but you can use any fabric. The fabric doesn't matter. So I'm cutting it at 27 long first. I like to do my length first, just my own preference. I'm going to clean up the top stitch area of my fabric <clears throat> and then I'm going to measure my width which we are going to do this way and the whole fabric works for Delilah's size so I don't have to um, actually cut the width uh, I folded over the fabric because that was the way it came. And so what I'm going to do is cut up the seam since it's already perfectly folded in half. And the good thing about pillowcase dresses is there's a lot of give. So if you didn't quite double the width, it's not that big of a deal. It's not going to hurt it. So basically you want two pieces that just look like long rectangles. Hence, they look like a pillowcase when they're held together. So the first thing I want to do is we are going to take the top sides from the top to the midpoint and you're going to fold it once about a quarter of an inch and you're going to fold it a second time a quarter of an inch and I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and show you what we're doing that for. Okay, so I told you that you're going to take the top, make sure the direction of your print on the fabric that you're using is going the right way, by the way. So from the top of the fabric to the midpoint of the length, you're going to fold it once a quarter of an inch and fold it over a second time, giving it a clean edge. And I like to consider myself a lazy sewer. And so you're going to see me not pinning. You're welcome to pin. Um, I've just done enough of these to know that they're pretty forgiving. So I'm not too concerned. So I am going to run these two stitches and we're good to go. Okay, so once you have both sides of the fabric done from the top to the midway point, okay, both sides of both pieces at the top, sewing from the top to the midpoint on them both, there and there. Okay, now you're going to Take the fabric, make sure that you can see what I'm doing. Okay, you're gonna take the fabric, you're going to fold it down about and two inches. You're gonna kind of put your fingers under there and tuck under the little edge. And you can cheat and not use pens and actually just use um, an iron. And basically you're making a casing and you're going to press that down or you can actually pin it and hold it still. So 
there's the outside of the pretty print of the fabric you folded that down created a little casing you can see this is at the top where we did the stitching right there um, and you're going to sew all the way across to the other side okay so now I'm gonna sew that casing really quick I'm gonna drop it under there get my fabric situated Again, I don't use perfect measurements because these are a very flexible outfit that you won't see a lot of this stuff once the little pillowcase dress is actually stitched. And if your lines aren't straight, again, it's not a big deal on this dress because of the way it's built and you'll see that in the end stitch done okay so here is that casing this is what it looks like from the back okay and let me set this down and here is what it looks like from the front it's just basically a little pocket which is why we made that that seam that I told you to make is so that when we fold this over it's a clean a clean entry here for when you put the ribbon through so this is the casing that the ribbon is going to run through inside on both pieces okay so we're actually almost done you got to do this to both pieces do the little casing top I'm gonna sew the casing top and then I'm going to show you a trick that I learned called a French seam not sure if you already know how to do it but I'll show you a French seam which really helps on these dresses okay so I'm sure when you're used to sewing you're used to sewing them um, right sides together make a seam and you're done we're not going to do right sides together first. We're actually going to do wrong sides together, which is going to seem confusing because you're thinking, well, now you can see the seam on the outside. Well, that's what we want at first. So let's lay them like they would look when they're finished. And I want you to take about a hand's length plus a little bit so to about here okay because this is where her arm is going to go this goes over the arm so you're going to imagine there's an arm right here and then there's going to be a bow up here mm -hmm. so go down about three quarters way down the dress and you're going to go ahead and start your seam right here but i want you to get pretty close um to the edge and you're going to do a cut in so kind of start this way from this edge and bring it in and come down but only do if you can do an eighth of an inch right here that'd be great if you have to do a quarter of an inch it's not going to hurt anything i'll show you how to um, account for that in a second so you're going to run a sti stitch from three quarters of the way down all the way down the dress with them wrong sides together on both sides so you're going to do this side and this side Okay, so I have it under the machine. I'm going to get, again, try to get as close to an eighth of an inch on the edges as I sew these together. and then I'll do the other side. Okay, so I'm sewing down the second side, you know, as close as I can to the edge. Okay, 
Okay. All right, so here's the trick. So now you've sewed up this line, right? All, you know, from midway, so we did three quarters. So there's the top, we did three quarters, and then we sewed a line all the way down. Didn't make a perfect line, it really doesn't matter. And I will show you what we're going to do now is you're going to trim as close to the stitch that you just made as you can without cutting the stitch, just cutting away all of this excess fabric that really doesn't matter. Go along uh, until you get to where the stitch was created. Let me get this other piece off. Okay. And then trim the other side as well. And again, you'll thank me for this stitch later because it just makes it cleaner on the inside of the dress when it's been washed and maintained, washed and washed and washed over and over and over again. Okay, so now I've got all the top done, the sides are done all the way down, we trimmed it, we trimmed it. Now, here's the trick. So you, now you're gonna turn the dress wrong side out. So take your sack, turn it wrong, side out. If you'd like to have an iron and iron this down, you can. Sometimes that helps if this is the first time that you're doing this, but it's really not going to matter. So I turned it wrong side out. You can see um, where I made the stitch. There it is. That's the seam. That's the seam that we made on the other side. See, it's clean like a normal seam. So here's the really cool trick. So you're going to flatten that seam out, getting that seam dead in the middle. And then, that's why I said ironing sometimes helps. So you can iron all the way across this and make it nice and stiff. And then you're going to do an eighth of an inch or a quarter, whatever you're comfortable with, this way. Okay? And what that's doing is it encapsulates on this side that stitch, that raw stitch. So you're trying to get more than that. So a quarter of an inch would probably be better than an eighth. So when you encapsulate that hidden inside that seam and you turn this wrong side out, now the inside of the dress is clean and the outside of the dress will be clean and all of this stitching, sorry it's not focusing very well, all of this stitching will be hidden inside and you won't have any frays after it's washed. And you can do this with any outfit, it just works really well with these dresses. So I'm going to set this down, run this stitch and show you how clean it's going to make it. Okay, so I am just running that quarter of an inch seam, encapsulating all of that seam that we saw on the inside that was raw. This eliminates all raw edges, all those little fuzzies that you get from the fabric. It's gonna hide all of these, and you're gonna run that all the way to where the, um, the, the stitch is here. Okay, all the way up to the part where the two pieces open up. That's normal. Okay, so now you can see that from the outside of the dress, there's a beautiful clean hem, and on the inside, there's no frayed edges. It's perfectly soft and smooth and folded on the inside. So both sides are nice and clean. Okay, so remember I didn't iron anything, but essentially this is what it should look like. Basically a sack with the two slits on the sides. And now the next thing we're going to do is hem the bottom. And by that, you can do the same thing where you just fold it over once, fold it over a second time, and that'll give you a clean hem on the bottom. I try to do a small hem. If you want to add um, rickrack or you want to add trim, ruffle, you know, now is the time to, you know, kind of flop that over, add it, and just like you would a normal trim, blanket, anything like that. Okay. So now that we have everything together as far as the, the trim at the top, 
the trim at the bottom, you need for this next step a safety pin and grow grain ribbon. I just prefer the grow grain because it holds up really well to usage. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to grab the ribbon real quick. Okay, so since this is for tutorial sake, um, I'm just using the grow grain ribbon I found. Uh, you can use this width or even wider. Uh, just it's up to you. You can use printed ribbon. You can use matching ribbon. Um, also, before you do this ribbon process, if you want, you can put trim across this to cover it. Uh, a lot of times I'll sew down um, a coordinating ribbon across that stitch line uh, just to cover it. Um, or I'll do rickrack across there. Uh, so you can do you can do a ruffle across there if you want. Uh, you're just going to basically have this open when you lay it on the machine, put the ruffle down like that while this is still open. So you still have that opportunity to add all this trim. Um, just make sure this ribbon isn't in there when you're adding the trim. So take your safety pin hooked on to your ribbon and basically just feed it through like you would any casing. Keep, you know, squanching the fabric onto the safety pin. Uh, remember, we made a wide one. Uh, a wide casing because again I like the wide ribbon to be in there and so then you grab it to this end okay so you made it through the one top piece so now here's the V that matches this you're gonna go through the next one so that it creates this kind of armhole um, and so you're gonna flip the fabric around a little bit and we're going to squanch it through, squanch it through, all the way till we make it to the other other side. Sorry about that, went out of camera view. Okay, so now I have two loose pieces on the same ends, wrong sides together. Um, so it looks kind of like this. So I, I squanch the dress down. Um, and this is the other side, so again, it's like a loophole. The dress is kind of hanging on here. Um, as far as how much, that kind of just depends on how big of a bow that you want, um, how much you want hanging. Sometimes the kids get irritated um, with too much string hanging down. Looks cute, but sometimes they get irritated. Um, so just kind of use your best, I guess, guess here. Um, that that I just cut, let's measure that, is 24 inches wide, which is close to the original width of the fabric. So okay, now I'm going to show it to you on Delilah so you can see where it makes sense. Okay, so here's the dress on. Um, I did not pre-wash this fabric, so it's really stiff. If it had been washed, it would have been a softer, flowier fabric, but I didn't wash the bouquet. So there's the side with the bow. And this is why we intentionally did these holes. If you find um, Lila's really thin, so you can always take a stitch and put a little bit more if you feel like it's too gaping here. Um, that's an easy fix. You're just going to take that seam and just run it right there because remember that's clean. Okay, so turn around to the other side. Um, this is the side where it has this. The printed ribbon on the grow grain is a little stiffer. Um, so this is also Walmart brand, which is even stiffer. Uh, if you use the nice grow grain you get from Hobby Lobby, this will sit really nice. Uh, the satins you can use too. You just can't burn the edges of the satin. You'll have to flip them over and, and tack it. So lift your arm. So this is this side again. Um, I didn't clip anything. I was just trying to get this done. So you can close this if you want. And then here's down. Remember she has the, the clean, everything's clean under here, all the edges. Um, it all looks good. There's the hem. Super easy. We can make tons of them. And like, I mean, truthfully, these dresses take, once you've got the pattern down, you can cut a bunch of them out and make